You shut up! Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And behind me, we've got the brand new G80 electric. And what we're gonna do today, Ollie, what is that pose? I was just like, come around the front because it's a cool looking car. Well, I say a cool looking car, that's subjective. Today, we're gonna take this beast. It's long, it's like over five meters. So if you are thinking about getting one of these, check it can fit in your garage. But today I'm gonna show you some really cool features of the electrified G80, so stay with me on that. And then also, we're gonna take this on the UK B roads to find out what it's all about. Okay, I've had this car over a week and I've tested loads of different things. I wanna to bring to you all of its best features. Solar panels, now this is an option of 1,360 pounds, but you can top up your battery in a year up to 715 miles more range. How good's that? Now being an electric car, you're probably looking for the port where to charge the car. You come on the side, it's not there. It's pretty cool, it's hidden. And it's right here, little button. And as soon as you press it, then it pops out. I think that is a cool little design feature. This car has got active noise cancellation tech. So it emits a signal, getting rid of all unwanted noise. And it's very quiet. For reference, it's one decibel louder on the motorway than a Mercedes-Benz S-Class Maybach. And that car is a 180,000 pound car to 240K. It's got massage seats. It's got five different modes of regen and I love that you've actually got metallic paddles. It's got soft closed doors. Let's talk about charging. Now this has got an 87.2 kilowatt hour battery. Fast charge, it can take up to 240 kilowatts max. If you get a fast charger like that, expect 10 to 80% in 21 minutes. Wall box charging from home, it's got 11 kilowatts. So if you do that, that's seven hours, 39 minutes. And if you use a seven kilowatt wall box, which most of us will do, then you're looking at 11 hours and 35 minutes. We need to talk about boot space with the Genesis Electrified G80. Here's a little button here for the boot. Power tailgate, you expect that. 354 liters. This is where the Genesis falls a bit flat. Smaller than the electrified, uh, than the petrol and the diesel version, you've got this weird hump and you can't put the back seats down, which is very annoying. So 354 liters isn't much at all really, but there is some little storage down here where you can keep your cables, your VT, V2L, vehicle to low charger. That's an option this has, so you can charge other appliances. That is here in the bottom, but overall, it isn't the most, but let me know what you think of that in the comments. Now the Genesis Electrified G80 comes in one trim level called the Luxury, which is super streamlined. No messing around with, oh, what trim level should I get? Because there's only one and then you can just add options. It's got 370 PS, all wheel drive, which is mega and 700 Newton meters of torque. And this thing will do a 0 to 62 in 4.9 seconds and I've heard on the line or online <laughs> that it actually goes a little bit quicker than that. So we'll do a launch later because sport mode in this car is super quick. Getting in sport mode, let's feel it. Whoa, okay, that's picked up well. -hoo -hoo -hoo! And that's 60. My God, that was quick. That was quick and sport mode, this car, absolutely comes alive. Honestly, the, the power, the accelerator is so responsive. I'm still in sport mode now and I can just go, there we go, jab, pushes your head back. And I have to talk to you about the steering as well. It's so responsive, it's so direct and positive. You can just literally throw it into the corners and the G80 can just be a completely different kettle of fish when you want it to from driving. You go from such a, a chilled out, relaxed vibe to an absolute hooligan in sport mode. Right, let's have a look at the interior of this Genesis, because there is quite a lot going on, isn't there? There's a lot to talk about, and I want to show you, so I'm going to turn you around. You've got some really nice wood features here. It's like a grey wood. You've got two cup holders, which is quite nice. They look quite fancy. Some crystal stuff, and this is quite nice. You've got, yeah, hidden button, look, 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 look. Wow. How executive. A little bit more room down here. Yeah. That's it. Interesting. Down here you've got two USBs here. Nice little screen here. Show them that. Yeah, it works really well. How easy is that to use? 
This is nice. I like these dials. Okay, so let's talk about the screen. Yeah. Because it's quite long and thin, isn't it? Normally you get a bit of a bit of a bigger screen, but I can't really decide if it's big enough. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think it is big enough. I know what you mean. It's kind of long and thin rather than short and fat. If look at his face. Yeah, you're <laughs> look facing it. it. Look at his face. Well, listen, listen. My dad always said, long and thin. Too far in, short and thick does the trick, and this is not short and thick. <laughs> so, what do you think about the TFT cluster display? So, this has got the innovative pack on it, which is an option which gives you 3D. So, if I can you film that, Adam? You get the 3D effect thing in there? It does say 3D effect. Okay, now when I click that, me and you probably can see it, but I don't know if the camera will pick it up. So, it's basically turned it into a bit of a 3D image there so you can have a look at the up. wheel because the wheel just it just looks a bit sad to me it is a sad wheel but i think these little bits here oh i've never known i wanted to hold a wheel like here before just there no wheels have just these little there. no wheels it's have not, these weird little it's like, like handles holding your hand check this right so i reset it so we can see what we've been getting in terms of range because range 323 miles you get Range is important. 323, although it sounds like quite a big number, yeah. I guess it is. I think 323 is quite a usable amount because you're not really going to be travelling 323 miles in one go, are you? No. In one day, so I think you'll be all right. I think more and more people now come to the fact of like, oh, yeah, oh, I need more miles. But actually, what you do in a day, over 300, realistically. That's enough, isn't it? I think, I think over 250, anyone's going to be happy if you're getting that. So it says... 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Let's have so, a look. Let's have a look. Let's show the so viewers. So far, 3.2 times 87.2. You're looking at 279. Quick maths. 279 miles at this 3.2 at the moment. So that's, that's the realistic miles you can expect. Considering you've got a solar panel on the roof, 280-ish miles. I was expecting like a little bit more because I think, I don't know, solar panels seem pretty cool, but obviously it's not doing much, is it? That's the total cumulative power generation, 41.3. So if you think this, the batteries in this is 87.2 kilowatt hours. Right, so it's done half a battery. So, yeah. Okay, so it's probably about a year old, and the solar panel has given it about 140 miles worth of power. Something that I found when I was doing some research on this car, which I think is quite interesting, is that when they made the electrified G80 in comparison to the diesel and the petrol, it's actually 17% stiffer in the electrified version because they use more aluminium in the seals and they use more carbon fiber in the front cross member, which means this car is gonna handle a lot better and it's got the better performance over the diesel and the petrol variants. So if that's something you care about, then the electrified G80 is probably the better one to go for. We have to talk about the handling in the G80 because it's one thing that I've been really impressed with. It, it's just really responsive. And when you're in a, a big, long car like this, you don't always expect it to be the most agile, but it gives you that confidence to just stick it into a corner. You know it's all wheel drive. It plants, it sticks. All wheel drive, obviously, if you are in certain settings because the Eco is rear wheel drive unless the front get some slippage but anyway i'm just going to go into sport mode and the steering oh my goodness it's a little bit it's like naturally weighted balance the steering i would like it a little bit lighter if i'm being honest especially when i'm trying to park up or move out of a space so it is a little bit too stiff and at the moment i've got it on sport where it just stiffens up a little bit more but honestly the steering straight in it's so easy it gives you so much confidence this car Okay, so we've both jumped into the back, so you can see what it's really like. I'm gonna hold the camera out here. What What do you think? I think it's really cool. I love this. This armrest is really comfortable. Do you think it's wide enough for two arms? You can. You can fit two. Two arms. Two hairy arms. Look. Two arms. Traditional tattooing. Not many people do that. Lots of hair. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and then look. There's a little thing. <laughs> you can get in. Adam, get in there. I can't get in there. <laughs> oh, look. That's how you get into. I know, it's quite, it's quite nice to pull stuff out, but what were you saying about the middle bit? I was saying, fundamentally, cars really need to have their rear seats be put flat for, you know, to put more things in the boot, because a lot of boots sometimes don't have enough. This definitely doesn't have enough, and we don't, we can't literally put these seats flat. So, 
look what you got here. So I must say, this doesn't come with every Genesis electrified G80. This is the executive pack mixed in with the the comfort seat pack. It's got the Ergo Motion seat pack and the innovative pack, the solar panel as well. But when you've got the executive pack, you get this big thing here. You've got a USB where you can put your movies in there, head jacks so you can listen to it, uh, wireless charger. You've even got another rotary selector. I don't yeah. think it is there. But to make it go to your screen, so if I put it over to Adams, would be easier. If I power up Adams. Wait, so you can power up each screen. Left and power, you've got, right power. You've got heated seats, which is nice. And this control in the back, which controls your little screen. Oh, Adam, actually, what, do this button while I forget. Okay. Oh, yeah. This little button. Watch the back. That is the blind. The blind. <laughs> the what? That is the blind. The blind that comes up. Look. Wow. Now, is that fancy? Does it but does it stop if it's trapped my finger? Let's see. Right. Does it, does it squash Ollie's finger? Oh, I was going to... Why yeah. did you move your finger? Well, I don't you moved it out of the way. It weren't going to stop. So, arm wrestle test in the back of the car. See hey, what just can see be like, done. Fully like... Okay. Fucking hell. Okay, okay ready? What's going on? Okay. Three, two, one. Let's go. God, you're so weak. I'm so strong, Adam. Oh! We done him! We done him! <laughs> Victory! So weak. Why are you so strong? All right, in the back. Let's have a look at the screen then. Right, so we've powered it up. I can move it across, make sure I'm on the left one. There we go. So we've got climate, map, weather, navigation to click. The only annoying thing is we don't know if we can stream our phones. You've almost, the only thing way to... Wait, what's the camera? It's just the car's camera. Wow. So you can look forward back and at the car. I mean, that's not really much entertainment, No, you can't even it? get 360 on there. So you've got maps, climate, weather, navigation... Video. Radio, you can't really do much. No media device available, so I don't think you can hook it up to your phone. That is a bit lame, isn't it? Oh, unless you go into the settings. Phone connection. Phone connection, but, but I think that's just, yeah, mine, but I don't think you can get it up. Rear seat privacy mode. Bluetooth, that's it, Bluetooth system info. No, you can't look at your videos or your porn. No. Who, I don't know about stuff like that. I think the seats in the back are pretty comfortable. I mean, you're, you're leaning back quite nicely. Headrest You've nice. got... Blinds next to you, you've got nice headrests, you've got a screen. I think overall it's a comfy place to be. Right, just a little extra. Door bins, there you can fit probably one drink in there, but that's by it. I've got a can in there at the minute. But let's have a little walk around on the outside and also the doors do open quite far. Look at this. Look at this. What are you staring at? No, I'm saying the doors do open really far. Look how wide this car is. Oh, and wide, I mean long. This Look at it. Look at it. One, two, three, four, five. Man, just over five meters long. So it is. It's long, isn't it? But there's. You think when you got a big car like this, you got some space? But we don't. We don't. What do you think? I think it's quite understated. I don't think it's too out there. I think it I definitely like, appeals to yeah, the older generation. I think it does appeal to the older generation, and it's a design that I don't really think is going to be accepted very well in the UK but the shape is nice the shape is quite nice of the car the wheels are a bit old man but I can get over those it's got a lot of chrome I why feel like this car is straight from the 60s why there's, are you leaning on it there's so too much? much I'm doing old man chrome right there's okay. too much chrome on the car chrome handles chrome seals down there chrome windows it reminds me of like you know the Mustangs with this is Hassan green so remember the old Mustangs you get which were green and they had a load of chrome on them the grill is quite out there, I think. I'm not sure if many people are going to like it because you've got these sort of, I don't know, little slitty lights here and this big old grill. Do you love it or do you hate it? Let us know. Coming round the back, I can't really say it's going to get much better in my opinion, but if, if yours is different, then let me know down below. You've got the G80 badge. This is the electrified version. One thing to note, actually, with this car is it's not on a dedicated electric platform like the GV60, like the eGMP. It's actually on the same platform as the diesel and the petrol. So the batteries have been slotted in, which means 10 centimetres in the front seats have been lifted. So you get more space in the petrol and the diesel variant in the front seats. And then the, under the bonnet, there's no frunk, again, because an engine has got to go in there. So it's on the same platform as those cars. So yeah, that's the outside. I mean, overall, I like the sort of shape of it. To be fair, just a quick one, because we had a man walk past us as we were filming, and he is 
in his 80s, I believe. And he actually said, oh, that's a really good looking car. He really liked it. So maybe it is just due to taste and an older generation thing because they obviously do like the look of this car. And maybe that's who this is targeted at. And if it is, then fair play. Now using this car for over a week, what I found really helpful is the regen paddles. They're very tactile as well. I love that they're metallic, but putting it on iPedal, you can literally pull this car to a halt. And I found that when you're, you're coming up to a roundabout or to a junction, and as soon as you lift your foot off, the car just starts braking so heavily, you hardly need to tap the brake. And I think for instances, when you need to brake quick and hard, that just brings the time even quicker. So it's a great safety feature as well. But the iPedal in this electrified G80 just works really well. And I'd probably just advise leave it on that because as soon as you lift off, it just starts harvesting. And even when I've had it on the motorway, it hasn't been that bad because I've just kept my foot sort of a little bit more on the power. Now, what is the electrified G80 like on the B roads here in the UK? Well, I'm gonna be honest, you do start to feel the size of this vehicle on the smaller B roads, and I have to concentrate on where I'm gonna plant it because it just feels so wide and it's long, like we spoke about, you know, over five meters. It does feel very comfortable. The suspension is a multi-link setup front and back. No air suspension like you get in other expensive cars like the Mercedes-Benz EQE. 89 grand car. This one's actually spec to 85 grand with the executive pack, but you can get one starting from 69,000 pounds. So we'll speak about competition a little bit later on, but I just wanted to show you the prices and tell you the prices. But this car is so pillowy. It really does absorb the lumps and bumps and it's dead quiet. Adam is in the back. I want to know about comfort levels. Adam, how are you finding it back there? Okay, so we'll talk to you about how comfortable it is in the back because let's start with knee room. So Ollie's put the seat like way in front. So I've got like a few hundred yards worth of room here. There's like loads. You've got this little screen, which is quite nice, but it doesn't really do much. Headroom wise, it's okay for me, but I feel like if you're going to be much like a tall person, which I'm not, um, you're going to struggle with headroom because there's not loads, but the materials are quite nice. This is quite soft. You've got a little blind here, which is quite nice. And you can control the rear blind with your screen and your climate with your screen, which is quite nice as well. Armrest, good for your arm. It's got a charge port here. It's got some controls here, which I do like. And I'm happy to report that these seats are very comfortable. These headrests are very nice, but it is what you expect in, the, in a sort of luxurious Genesis, but I feel like there could have been some improvement, especially to be made with the room in it. Right, so let's talk some uh, competition and negatives on what you can expect with this car. So what are the other competitors out there? The Mercedes-Benz EQE comes with air suspension and that's 89 grand. And this is 85K with those options. You get this start in 69K. So you could... You this, could... Yeah, I mean, this is a bit cheaper, but then you expect that with a Genesis compared to a Mercedes. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I'd, well, if it was your money, I'd probably take this because I'm going to save a lot of money. But everybody loves Mercedes, especially if you're born in the UK, you love German brands. Forget the Mercedes. Let's go to a BMW i7, another electric car, 100 grand. Yeah, 100 that's grand. got even more toys though, hasn't it? That's got the big screen yeah, that comes you got down loads of screens you got loads of stuff going on in that car so again bigger car more expensive 100 grand though 100 grand more starting expensive from. i know other yeah. than that you got what i5 there's the i5 the the look around what's that about 70k then you've got the new audi a6 e-tron which yeah. looks fancy that's 60k I mean, we're talking about electric luxury yeah saloons which there's not loads of but just to name a few, I mean, this this is, as a standard spec, is quite nice, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's it's the, it's the thing, isn't it? It's depending, what I like about this is, it's just one trim level, and then you, you spec it up. When you go with other brands, you have trim levels, and you go, oh, do I get all of this with that? And they go, oh no, you still need yeah, to have this have, and that. You have to add quite a lot of stuff onto it, but. Genesis is a brand where you have to give it a chance, because in the UK, we, we hate, Brands that come in that have no history. And at the moment, we're getting all these 
you know, Chinese brands with a, a Moda we drove yeah. the other day, yeah. coming into the UK, and sometimes us as uh, UK people, we can be shut off. But since I've been working with Genesis and getting these cars, they are cars that I've missed. Like when we had the GE70. Yeah. And if, if you it. think about Genesis' parent company, Hyundai, and the cars that they're putting out these days are some really decent cars, and they're growing massively in popularity in the UK. I mean, they've got the new Kona, the mm. new Ionic 5, the end version, it like even their um, sports stuff, the hatchback that we drove, yeah, all really nice, all drove really well. Yeah, so, I thought the end fastback, that was yeah, good. I do think there's big things for Genesis and Hyundai. Same, same with Kia, they're all part of the same same brand, all sharing their engineers, sharing their designers. Yeah. You know, Kia are smashing sales year on year because people love the Sportage and all the other, and, and then Genesis is, you know, premium. If people start giving this a chance and going oh you know what actually i'm going to get this i'm going to save a bit of money if i go to a bmw or audi and i think more people that get in these genesis cars will be pleasantly surprised okay let's talk about negatives with this g80 i think first of all you've got the boot is a massive negative practicality i would say the looks are going to be at second negative third negative have you got anything to add i think I don't like the back seats don't drop. Again, that's it to do with the boot space. Practicality again. Anything but, else? Okay. Well, I don't think there's too many other negatives. So overall, it's a pretty, uh, pretty good package. So that has been our episode on the electrified Genesis G80. We've taken it on the UK roads. We've spoke about how it handles, what the suspension is like. I've showed you those very cool features of the car. It's got a solar roof. For goodness sake, I want to know what you guys think about the Genesis Electrified G80 down in the comments below. As always, throw us a like if you like the episode, get subbed to Car Chat TV, and we will see you on the next one. If you've made it this far, thank you ever so much for watching. I've just popped up two more videos on your screen that you also may like. If you do watch one, let me know what you think.